different hats. I'm the executive director of the National Scholastic Trust Foundation, um, which is not to be confused with the U.S. Chess Federation. Although I am uh, also uh, working for the U.S. Chess Federation, uh, right now I am the uh, chair of the Scholastic Council, which sets policy for the uh, uh, for all scholastic events in the U.S. I was also chair of the uh, Chess and Education uh, Committee for the U.S. Chess Federation for 10 years. Um, so I'm going to go through very quickly. Uh, I'm not going to spend time on some of the things that I have up here uh, because of uh, uh, points that other people have addressed. I think uh, the St. Louis uh, video was just absolutely fantastic. Congratulations, Brian. You know, and, and the whole layout of what you want to do, you know, it's been. Uh, with the community as a whole, and this picture in particular, you know, uh, one of the things I did a long time ago was to, to get the police in, uh, in uniform showing up at the school to play chess with the kids during the day. So the kids, especially the junior high school kids, which who are pretty much the at-risk group, um, that they see the police in a different light, and so um, the relationship changes. Um, and uh, just very quickly, we all have our programs and so forth. Um, and uh, so uh, I had mentioned in one of the workshops yesterday, so I won't go through it again, that uh, uh, we have a 16-hour a, a uh, workshop with, with an exam and which also requires uh, a component for the teachers to uh, uh, to perform several hours. And, um, and we need to also think beyond that uh, because it's one thing to, uh, one with the way you introduce chess to uh, a very young student is not the same as you would introduce it to to an older one. The kind of material has to be, you know, has to be different. And, um, and you know, um, it doesn't mean if you don't start playing chess in, in pre-K that you're, you're not going to be good or that there is no value. So um, when you're talking about the older kids, there has to be a reason that you can give to the educators as to why chess should be uh, brought into the curriculum. And this is particularly with the curriculum. So like I said here, you know, introduces critical thinking at an early age. and. Um, um, my, my own background in terms of how I started teaching was as a school in Manhattan that was looking for a chess teacher and I went in answered an ad and um, I got involved and now I have been there about 30 some odd years and um, uh, Sophia knows the school um, and um, uh, it just has really been institutionally really important. <coughs> Um, now, I contend that visualization is a skill that actually can be worked on and you can improve your visualization skills. And I have, uh, one of the ways that I have tried that in my classroom is to, uh, is to have kids um, uh, record a blindfold game. So uh, the, the rules are how far can you go before you make an illegal move uh, a, a little bit later. Um, and taking calculated risks. And this is, uh, again, I'll uh, talk about this a little bit more. But what's particularly interesting about this with, in, with respect to gifted children, they find this, this notion very threatening, that there could be more than one right answer. So they won't, don't want to say anything. And they, you know, they won't express an opinion because they don't want to be wrong. So, you know, so chess is very interesting this way because, you know, it being open-ended and there being the possibility of more than you know, one right answer that you can encourage uh, risk taking, you know, within a safer environment. And I, I have found that this is particularly useful with, you know, with, with gifted children. Confidence, you talked about that, other people have talked about. And, and I think you can take this and you can apply it to other disciplines. You know, and I found, for example, that when I talked in this way in a classroom, even a young classroom of second, third grade students, that this is why we are doing chess in school. That this particular thinking will help you in, in lots of other situations. 
the buy-in from the part of the student was much greater. And, you know, they were now interested. You know, oh, th yeah, really? Do you think this can help me? And, um, and so I think this is an extremely important thing. The group did poetic analysis, I think, uh, and chess and poetic analysis. Um, the conclusion was that transfer can be achieved if you also teach for transfer. You know, and I think that's very important. So when we are teaching chess, if we are saying we are teaching chess in schools because this is very beneficial, then we have to actually explain why it's beneficial and how it's beneficial. And, and that's, uh, you know, that's a very important part of this. So, um, so yeah, critical thinking, we, we, we talked about that, what is high level critical thinking. And then it's, uh, it's criteria based. So for example, you know, Oh, we learn very early as chess players to evaluate positions. And those of you who are players, you know, there's various criteria that you use in evaluating positions. Well, in this aspect of it, it's because I felt that uh, every, every level, every level of the move selection process in trading, but you have to act on your, you know, on your findings. So, so this, uh, so the new Bloom, uh, pyramid would look something like this. Um, so at the top, if instead of create, we could say move. You know? But every level here, every level that is laid out here is used in the move selection process in chess. Learning, which is what I'm supposed to talk about, uh, the idea is that how does it intersect with other subjects? So that's my uncle. <laughs> But I just wanted a, an image. <laughs> um, so, so my uncle uh, was an attorney. Uh, well, he was actually the vice president of the International Court of Justice in The Hague. Um, he died uh, uh, about six months ago. And he's, you know, um, uh, came up with some very interesting uh, 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 decisions in his judgments. For example, the doctrine of sustainability you know, whereas where one country has a duty to another country in terms of managing natural resources and so forth. You know, like that was developed in his, in his judgments. Why do I have this picture up here? So John Foley, I didn't know until I heard earlier today, is a lawyer. Um, I read law at Southampton uh, University here in the 1970s. So, um, but I never practiced as an attorney, but my background, my background is in law. Um, what I found was that the, the thinking process, for example, in law and in chess, is almost identical. And when you consider, so, so what is legal precedent? You know, legal precedent is all the games the grandmasters have played for, you know, for hundreds of years, right? That's your body of knowledge. You're supposed to take this body of knowledge and, and examine this critically and, and see if you can develop new ideas, you know? Um, so, so this is what is constantly taking place. And, and there's another similarity depending what type of law you do, uh, not what type of law, but what kind of lawyer you are. Are you a practitioner? You know, are you a litigator? What you would call, a, a, I guess, a barrister here you know, as opposed to a solicitor or someone who does, you know, does research and prepares briefs. But whether you're one end of the law or the other, you know, you're practicing this same kind of critical thinking. I found law school very easy. You know, it's, it's just, uh, you know, um, but, but still, um, I, I think that the more connections that we can show between the thinking process in chess and the thinking process in, in other fields, you know, uh, actually will help us to, to sell chess to the, uh, you know, to the educational establishment. Interview on, um, on, on the, an afternoon show, where Hidar was being interviewed on the similarity of strategy between, uh, between uh, high level chess and, and investing, because Hidar likes to trade and he's, is an options trader. Um, so, um, 
<laughs> well, he told me, no, no, don't show this picture. People will think I'm not serious about chess. <laughs> but I said, no, it's, we, we know he's serious about chess. But again, you know, the connection between chess and finance, and you will see so many people in finance who are actually interested in chess or have some background, whether they play, you know, seriously or not. You know, there is uh, it's published by Mongoose. And what I'm trying to do is to create content. You know, like I'll leave it to the experts like Brian Minabay. But we have a lot of content for the, you know, for the younger levels. We have very little content, you know, for the, for the older groups, you see. And so my idea was to create points of intersection between chess and other disciplines. Okay, so the, the obvious one that made sense to me was history. I had an illustrator and, and uh, they gave me like all these people and, and then I, you know, I, I used that.